Please go ahead. All right. Um, hello, guys. Welcome to the uh, session of Bamji and myself. Bamji is uh, CTO of Yes Gnome, uh, a game development studio from India. I'm Chris, founder and CTO at Photon Engine. I'm headquartered in Germany, but we are um, we have people working for us all over the world. Start the presentation. So the topic we will be discussing today um, will be um, about multiplayer games. Um, and in uh, in particular about a new technique uh, which we think will disrupt multiplayer development um, using deterministic um, predict rollback technology or architecture. So I will start uh, the session um, for about yeah, 20 minutes probably, so the first half, and talk about... Um, Photon, let's say, and give an overview about netcode strategies and technologies, and then the deterministic way of doing multiplayer in particular. And then I will hand over to Bamji, who um, who used uh, that approach to build a fighting game, and they will share insights and and experiences there. Um, so just to give a brief overview about. Um, myself and what we are doing. So we um, at Photon here, we are running a global infrastructure to enable studios for um, to do real-time multiplayer games. So we have um, yeah almost 500,000 studios using our Photon technology. We have um, about 500 million players every month. Um, playing on our service. So on the right side, you see a couple of our um, the, the titles we are powering. I, I'm sure a lot of them are popular in in India and all over the world. So from Golf Clash to Battlelands Royale um, or Pixel Gun 3D, Crash of Cars, Frag. So a lot of uh, mobile hits. Um, our technology not only runs on mobile, but on, on PC and uh, consoles as well. Um, so our Photon Cloud is available in, in about 20 regions worldwide. So real-time multiplayer is all about low latency. Um, so um, this is a reason why we branch out into all these different regions. Um, we have, um, as you can see, we have an India data center as well. So in particular in India, it's important to have, um, we even open up another data center a little bit in the north um, as well. Um, we are, uh, so real-time multiplayer is a lot about um, traffic. So there's a lot of traffic flowing, uh, flowing through our data center. So we, we are crunching about four petabyte of traffic every month, so that's uh, quite a bit. Um, to give a brief overview, we are providing um, a lot of different choices for studios to build multiplayer. Um, so on the left side, on the left side, you see the, the, the real-time multiplayer products we are offering. Um, on the right side, we have a couple of communication products, so um, like voice, video, and chat, which is not so much the focus today. Um, the the low level product we offer is called real time. It's a it's a very high performance transport layer leveraging UDP um, as a bearer, so it's very efficient, especially if you have um, uh, let's say weaker networks. So it behaves uh, to do unreliable UDP is is behaves very well. On top of real time, we offer a couple of different products, Punbold and Quantum, which are all running in Unity, um, which is the most popular game engine. And um, they all follow different strategies. So depending on the type of game, um, you would pick potentially a different product. So Pun is the most popular one um, we have. 
Um, Bolt, for example, is designed specifically for first-person shooters, third-person shooters and action games. And Quantum is a deterministic um, game engine. And this will be a bit the, the focus of, of our session and the talk today. Um, so basically, there are two netcode strategies or multiplayer strategies um, available from high level. Um, so there's state synchronization, which is the most popular one and um, has been like super popular in the past, uh, whatever, 20 to 30 years to build multiplayer games. State synchronization means you're synchronizing the game state of objects. So you're sending around position, position of objects, position of players, position of bullets. So you're basically synchronizing the game state all the time. So famous games like Tribes, Halo, Source Engine, Unreal Engine Networking, all are following the state sync pattern. There is a um, very popular um, new way of doing stuff. It's actually the, the roots of that is, is pretty old. It's synchronizing input. So in, instead of synchronizing game state between the game clients, um, you are synchronizing input. So input means controller input, left, right, up, down on a um, console controller or on a keyboard, of course, the keyboard input, it can be mouse input, it can be touchscreen input, controller input in VR. But the essence is, or the important thing is, you are not synchronizing game state. Um, so, and I'm digging into this um, in the first step. So, the advantage um, of using it um, like a deterministic critic rollback engine is basically you as a developer, you do not see um, net code at all. So you don't have to deal with sockets, with synchronizing objects. To you as a developer, it looks like all the controllers are attached to a local machine. So you essentially build um, like a local multiplayer game. So there, everything you see is input from the controllers. Um, so there's one code base for having a single player game, a local multiplayer game, or an online game. But everything will be networked automatically. So if you have physics, uh, if you have a soccer game with a shared ball, or if you are pushing around boxes, so the network will be completely um, automatically synchronized. You do not have to worry about it. Um, to go a bit more in detail, so there, if, if in this picture you see four controllers attached to your uh, local machine, only one controller is real, which is a local player. So the other players are predicted. So what's important, if you are moving your character in your, in your game, you want the character to move right away, to have zero lag. So everything you do should be instant. So the input of the other players didn't arrive um, yet. So um, it's important uh, to, uh, so or what, what um, predict rollback means, you are predicting the input of the other players. So, um, and that prediction may be wrong. So you have to roll back all the time, but that is all happening uh, behind the scenes. So what is happening in the network? So this is a developer view. So you have um, you are you are building like a local multiplayer game. So the developer view, uh, the the network view behind the scenes, the network is exchanging the input and making sure that every connected player to a game is get is getting the input. So the simulations are up keeping in sync. Um, so the the pink box you see there is a simulation which runs deterministically on all the clients. It can as well run on the server side um, to have an authoritative place to do certain decisions. So let's say you have a soccer game and you are not trusting the clients to say, okay, I shot a goal. You want to have this um, deterministic uh, block running on the server and just communicating with your backend and making sure that um, this is a trusted source for, for results. Um, 
one important thing to say. So the bigger the games get, the more the probability that you have players with bad latency. So, and this is usually causing issues, let's say, in, in state sync approaches where you have to deal with clients which have a very bad ping. So how we deal with it? So our um, relay on the server side um, is accepting input uh, for a certain amount of time. So let's say, for example, 400 milliseconds. So that if, you're, if the clients are not sending input in time to the server, the server will invalidate the players and punish and penalize basically the clients with a bad ping. So all the players can have a good player experience and only the people with a bad latency and bad ping are, are penalized, which is very um, helpful. So because the simulations are all running deterministically, we have tooling like you um, um, to, to detect desyncs, which could potentially happen. Uh, due to code which is not deterministic. Um, to explain a bit, so Quantum is a product I'm talking about. So the um, Quantum enables you to write deterministic code. So um, we provide a complete framework, which is this pink block, which gives you um, like a consistent API to build the complete game. So it gives you an entity component system to write your game logic, a job system to do multi-threading. The job system is used by all our components as well. So the essential part is a um, math library, which is deterministic using a fixed point math. We have full, um, uh, like a full physics engine, 2D and 3D. We have pathfinding. So everything is fully deterministic and it's very hard to break out of determinism in our gameplay simulation. Strictly decoupled from the um, simulation is the view. So the whole thing I'm talking about is running in Unity. So the view is where um, Unity is um, uh, taking uh, care of and rendering what the simulation is providing. As you can see, the input is the only thing the simulation sees. So there is no network. So the network layer is completely abstracted away um, from your game. So the only thing the simulation and the developer has to deal with is input and just making sure his game works. Um, Quantum um, is because of the, the approach, you have to send input to every player. Um, Quantum has one limitation. It's not, uh, which is 64 players right now. So you can, you couldn't build like an MMO or games with more than 64 players. So we are working to lift this limit to, to more players. But there's a natural limit because um, input has to be sent to every player um, in a game, um, at some point, the, in, the, the amount of data you have to send around gets too much. And so this is why there's a limit of 64 players. But um, we listed here the, the type of games which are perfect for, um, for quantum and for predict, deterministic predict rollback. So as you can see, it's, it's like perfectly suited for, um, let's say, most of the popular games. Exceptions would be um, yeah, MMOs or FPS games with more than 64 players. Um, so we are looking for um, professional teams and um, dedicated teams who are trying to build professional software. So with Quantum, we, um, we've been convincing about 70 teams worldwide, what you can see here, are using Quantum already. Um, we are not working only with, let's say, top-notch AAA companies, but with smaller dedicated teams as well. So, and one sample is YesGnome um, from India. So um, they were, let's say, um, yeah, digging into into a technology for their fighting game, and we discussed and 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 figured that quantum would be a perfect fit. So we are looking for for really um, 
yeah, professional teams um, will want to build, let's say, triple A grade multiplayer games. And um, I would now hand over to Vamji to um, explain how they made the decision for Quantum and how they, let's say, tackled their fighting game. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, yeah. Let me present my screen. One second. Hey guys, uh, yeah, thanks Chris. Uh, uh, hey guys, uh, this is Vamshi. Uh, from I'm the CTO of Yasno. Uh, so, uh, so we have built a game called Fight to Kill. Uh, so this is a real time fighting game uh, we have built using Quantum. Uh, yeah. So, so before uh, we proceed, I'm like, why? Uh, so before we get into the game, uh, we just want to uh, we just want to explain whom we are. Okay, so we are Yesnom, uh, and like we we started this company in 2014. Uh, before that, uh, we helped some of the uh, companies like uh, Tab. We built some games like Tabso and the TabJoy the SDK, uh, which is right now available for uh, mainly ads conversion and all that. Uh, so we we helped them to build the TabJoy SDK. So we we built a couple of games. Then what we decided is okay, instead of uh, we working with clients. So why can't we start our own games and why can't we start publishing our own games? So that's where we started Yes No. And uh, we have 50 plus strong team members right now. And uh, we have built approximately 20 games till now. And uh, we worked with, uh, uh, we, we built and published some of the games for the well-known IPs like Madagascar. So we helped uh, to build their uh, uh, one of the game for their uh, movie. And we also worked with CBS Interactive for Star Trek Trexels. Uh, we built first and second versions, and the second version, Pixels 2, was in combination with Congregate. And we also worked with Fox Fox Studios, uh, with the Fox Next Games, on um, the Kingsman title. And uh, we also worked with the Cartoon Network for the Adventure Time title. And uh, so the Adventure Time Champions and Challenges was one of the game was featured by Apple. And the Star Trek 2 also was featured by Apple. It was the game of the day. And we also worked with uh, some of the brands like Mattel and Hasbro. And we were one of them who built on their IPs like Barbie, Barbie Life, uh, the current uh, app store game that is available. Uh, so we worked with that. And along with that, we also worked on a couple of titles with like Ever After High. Uh, so there are some other games which we also worked on there. So this is where we are starting from 2014. So till today, so we, we are just uh, building the games and we love to uh, build them and these are some of our titles uh, which we have uh, come across or oh, sorry we have built and the top row whatever you are going to see so those are uh, uh, those are not multiplayer games uh, but starting with cricket clash the second row so starting from second row uh, all the games that you are seeing right now are built using multiplayer uh, multiplayer again like why we are uh, I'm like because you can see the current trend uh, every uh, earlier, what we used to have is right. We used to have end users who want to play the game. They want to enjoy the game. They would love to play the game on their themselves. So now later, what happened is right. They want to always compete. Uh, they need a competitive gameplay where they have the game and they want to compete with others. So that is where we, uh, that is when we decided, okay, so let's try to uh, start work on the multiplayer games also. And apart from that, the multiplayer games, we also building some of the titles. So I would like to take a couple of uh, 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 one to two minutes of your time uh, just to show what are all the different games which we have built. And the reason for showing this particular thing is right. What are all the different kinds of multiplayer games which we have built? And what is the reason for going to build a fighting game? And why we went into the quantum? So it's a kind of journey which we want to just try to put together. Uh, one minute. Uh, let me share. Okay. So
for watching that. Uh, <clears throat> just give me a second. So, uh, so all these games, whatever which you have seen, right? So that is one of our uh, multiplayer skill games portfolio, where all these games were built using Photon Network. So that is where uh, which we have some experience. I'm like, it's been from uh, past two years. We are working with Photon folks, and uh, most of our multiplayer games uh, we developed using Photon. And uh, one of the advantage with Photon Network, uh, Photon Engine, what we are going to get is right. So we built an internal framework. That, that would make sure that we could able to just focus only on the gameplay part. So rest of the multiplayer related part, everything could be done, taken care of by Photon. So that is where which we have done with that. And so while we are working on this particular, all the multiple titles, so what we thought is right, so, uh, so why don't we start build a fighting game? So, uh, so at that particular time, what we thought is right. So there were some multiple things uh, that, that, were, that went in our mind. One was, can we build a fighting game? Uh, we, because we have built pretty good amount of multiplayer games and fighting game is again trending very well. So let's, why, why can't we build a fighting game? So that was the very first question. Now, once we got this particular thing in mind, then what we thought is right, when we explored, then everyone who has mentioned then uh, the blogs and everywhere, they said that build, building a fighting game is very tough. Okay, so let's try to go. Okay, we understood that why it is tough because the, the, we need a lot of more and more animations. Uh, we need each and every synchronization is needed while the input is being given and all that. Okay, that is fine. So now let's also thought about, okay, so why don't we try to build a real-time fighting game? So then building a real-time fighting game is much more challenging. That is what everyone has been mentioned. So what we also thought is right, okay, so let's try to build that particular fighting game. And then with our prior, prior experience, like as we built some of the multiplayer games, so then why don't we give a shot? Uh, so what we have done is, right, we have done some minor research. Uh, we have some, not only minor, what I could able to tell is right, we have done some pretty good amount of research. Then we understood, okay, there are some uh, things which we have to take care. So now then at that particular point of time, we have decided, okay, let's give a shot. As we have a very limited time, uh, then what we thought is right. Okay, let's go with uh, let's go and build this particular game. So that is where we have built this particular game called Fight to Kill. Uh, so this game has been uh, launched on MPL platform. Uh, you guys could able to download the MPL platform and you could able to play this game. Uh, uh, right now, this is uh, so uh, before uh, before I explain uh, how this went in, I'd like to show the teaser of uh, this particular uh, game so that. Uh, uh, you could able to see what is this game is all about. One minute. Uh, sorry, guys, I have to switch in between the tabs. and uh, a quick uh, gameplay uh, how the gameplay looks like Thank you. 
Cool. So yeah, so that was a teaser and a little bit of gameplay of this fight to kill game. Uh, uh, this particular game. Uh, uh, so, so this particular game. And like before we get into the gameplay, what are all the different things? Uh, what are all the different uh, topics which you are going to cover now? So we'd like to explain fight to kill. What are all the different gameplay features that are available? And uh, real-time fighting game. To build any real-time fighting game, what are all the different requirements that are uh, needed to build a fighting game? And what are all the different initial experiments which we have done? Uh, what kind of uh, problems which we have encountered? Uh, why we went to quantum? So we'd like to explain one slide with the quantum. In a nutshell, what are all the different things that are available in quantum? And uh, developing the game using quantum, um, like with the quantum's approach. Like uh, after using quantum, like what are all the different things which we have done? And apart from this, we would also like to explain what are all the different input and animation systems that are needed for to build any any fighting game. Uh, with, uh, we would like to point out that. And apart from that, what are all the different learning curves uh, that are available during the development? Uh, and apart from that, uh, we'll be also covering what are all the different quantum advantages, what are all the different advantages which we got, and what kind of support which we got from quantum. Uh, yeah. So before, yeah. So, so these are the different uh, gameplay features that are available. So this fight to kill game is one versus one real time fighting game, uh, which is built for mobile platform. And this is a real time synchronous game uh, where during the gameplay, like you would be able to uh, match with any opponent who comes online via matchmaking. Uh, there will be a matchmaking system that is available so that uh, the user can, uh, uh, based on the ELO system, the uh, players are being matched. So both the players are being connected. Each gameplay uh, will have three rounds uh, with a time limit. Right now, we, uh, we have a limited time limit of one minute. Uh, uh, sorry, one and a half to two minutes. So with the time limit, so what will happen is, right, so the user has to, uh, the characters will fight each other until they defeat their opponent or whether the time expires. So either, either I could able to be beat my opponent or I could able to, uh, or, or if at all the time, because every round has one and a half minute of time, within that particular time, either I have to defeat the opponent whenever I'm going to attack, then his health is going to decrease. Uh, at the end of the day, what will happen is, right, so he'll lose his health and he gonna win. he gonna lose, I'll be the winner. Otherwise, if, if the same match continues, then there will be a tie. Uh, the round will be uh, go to the next round. So this is how it is being done. Now, the next thing is to control your character, we have implemented a virtual joystick and we also have the basic kicks, uh, special, uh, the basic kick and punch related attacks. Apart from that, we'll be also having some special combos and special attacks, which will give some more power. So these are the basic uh, features for any fighting game. Uh, this fighting game also has the same kind of features. So what are all the requirements that are needed to build a real-time fighting game. So first thing is, uh, what we thought is right, okay, so as we are trying to build a, a fighting game, so it should be real-time multiplayer. Uh, so definitely it should be a real-time multiplayer. And we all, we, we thought of building a best looking game uh, with good amount of characters. Each character having a character is not enough. You need to have pretty good animations. You need to have different kinds of weapons. Each, each character can hold different kinds of weapons. And you also need pretty looking, good looking VFX. Without that, it, it, it will not work out. So then what, so these are the things. And apart from this, as we are building this as an RTS fighting game, uh, the, it should be a latency sensitive game uh, where the thing should happen frame to frame. So that is how it is. Now, uh, what is latency sensitive game? When, when we say the term latency sensitive game, uh, it should be synced. Uh, the frame to frame, it should be synced across all the devices even on the average network also, average network uh, will, will, impact the, uh, will impact the gameplay. Suppose if I am a bad network or even if I am an average network user also, there might be a chance of impacting the frame by frame because what will happen is right, when you are building this kind of fighting game, uh, when I move one frame, then I expect the opponent also should react to my frame, whether I'm moving my punch or whether I'm moving my hand or whether I'm moving my leg, I'm kicking him, then, the opponent should react or defend. So that kind of uh, latency sensitivity is very important. 
then only the, the fighting games are pretty impressive otherwise what will happen is right if you if you if you if you give a punch then opponent gets it later then you could able to expect or impact really bad gameplay so that is how uh, so that was one of the thing and our target audience were indian audience so what we have to make sure that we have to ensure our network because there are few uh, there are few places where we use 3g 4g networks and wifi so we also have to make sure that the game works pretty good on 3g network also and apart from that we also have a very short development time because we just want to experiment this particular game making sure that this game should be built pretty fast so that was our target internally so so these are the couple of requirements that are there uh, before we start this game so what we have done is right so we have done with some initial experiments uh, we have built an early prototype uh, to experiment the multiplayer gameplay only so what we have done is right so we have uh, we have took one character and uh, we we have done uh, three animations so we have uh, we have implemented a virtual joystick first uh, making sure that the characters moves left right jump and it also does one punch and one kick so these are so these are the minimum requirements which we have kept to build our initial prototype and uh, we try to experiment this now uh, for, for this particular prototype uh, we have spent approximately 2 weeks of time this 2 weeks uh, so what we also tried is right as we have uh, some multiplayer experience using photon so what we thought is right okay why don't we try with photon on to uh so at that particular time what we decided is right we know that the regular packet sending doesn't work out all this so what we try to do is that we have implemented with a lockstep approach so what is meant by lockstep approach the lockstep approach is uh, what will happen is right uh when a data is being sent when i make an input uh, my frame data is being sent to the opponent so at the same time uh, okay so Uh, what will happen is right in the lockstep approach when the app launches uh, when both of the players are being connected every frame is being counted so for example if it is 60 uh, if it is 2 minutes gameplay uh, then what will happen is right uh, starting from the launch uh, till till the 2 minutes happens you will be having approximately 7200 frames now my device will start from frame 1 then the opponent device is also starts from frame 1 now when i send my frame one data then the opponent also i expect the opponent data also in the same fashion i'm going to get frame one so unless and until i get the opponent's frame one data i will not accept the input so this in this way what will happen is right uh, we'll try to make sure that both the frames are in sync uh, we tried with this particular approach but what happened is right uh, uh, because of uh, so we encountered and moreover uh, we went with the non deterministic approach Uh, with this particular thing what happened is right the drawbacks what we encountered is the gameplay experience was very bad uh, it was okay on some of the network devices but at some point in time some point of times it went down again uh, we have miscellaneous opinions and then both the players were impacted even with a very minor latency also the players gameplay has been impacted lags were there on 3g 4g and wifi also sometimes it was working fine sometimes it was not working fine so uh, what we thought is right okay this is not the right solution so then what uh, then 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 we went with quantum uh, because we initially aware of quantum but we just want to ensure that uh, okay let's give an approach with photon so that is where we failed uh, then uh, i think i think chris already covered uh, most of the uh, quantum related stuff but what i'll be doing is right i'll be just uh, on a high level i'll be covering just with a single slide what quantum does uh quantum is main, mainly a deterministic ecs system uh, deterministic means that uh, when given the same initial condition and the same set of inputs uh, your simulation ex- gives exactly the same result across all the devices so what will happen is right if i when, when we say exactly the same result if there is any minor difference also that would impact your gameplay so what we are trying to do here is uh it 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 ensures that whatever the checksum if you take even if you run any physics state or even if it is a float value or any variable any value whatever you are going to do it may it ensures that that is same across both the devices in general what will happen is right uh, let, let let us take an example if if there is a pretty good processor that are that is on one device and there is another processor on another device 
when we are talking about the float values there are some issues which we encounter for example like if you are if you are executing a physics model or or, or physics uh, physics uh, physics model or it could be a float points though we mentioned that the float points should be on a tentatively it could be same but when we go with the realistic value that is always different from one device to other device so this particular minor thing might impact your entire gameplay too so so that is one advantage which you are going to get and the quantum also has some deterministic libraries uh, it has a math library where it going to it going to take care of all the floating related value related issues and physics uh, physics when i meant to be physics 2d 3d it could be force velocity and all the specific related which are dealing with the floating values everything will be handled and they have a, a namesh thing with the path finding logic this is being internal written just just those kind of data values making sure that both the devices the the quantum's responsibility is to making sure that both the devices have an exact identical values irrespective of whatever the values it is both of the devices going to get the same identical values so that is being handled by quantum and the other thing is that predict and rollback so predict and rollback is one of the uh, one of the pretty good feature that is available uh, which any deterministic engine going to take care of it one advantage of this particular thing is right this will not impact the player with uh, Uh, I'll take an example. If we go with the lockstep approach, uh, what will happen is right. Uh, in general, with the lockstep approach, uh, if I give an input, uh, if I am expecting the frame number, the same frame uh, from the opponent, what will happen is right. I cannot proceed the gameplay because my game is struck. But with the predict and rollback rollback approach, what will happen is right. I being a good network guy, when I am playing an opponent where who is having a bad network, it doesn't stop my experience. Uh, what it does is right it will allow me to continue my gameplay as smooth as i could able to play where on the opponent side what will happen is right when the opponent receives my data uh, my good network guys data when is being received by the opponent the opponent it, it uh, what quantum does is right it try to understand okay which particular frame you were okay so x number of frames are being executed so as this particular rollback mechanism what it does is right it try to readjust what are all the different frames that are there and it tries to execute very smoothly so that is what the advantage that is we call it as a prediction how it being executed and apart from that how that is being simulated so that is the one of the advantage and the second thing is right only input exchange so with between both the devices as a developer we just need to send the only the input value when i say input value this is my input i need to pass the input a like rest of the simulation of that particular gameplay for example like i i did a jump now i'll i'll be passing making sure that the jump is there with me and then uh, th- that is a kind of input that is being passed in between now the the original simulation or decoupling of simulation logic will be taking will be handled locally so that is how which we are trying to ensure that if this is my input my local device knows okay this is the input how it should be executed so that is a kind of advantage which we are going to get where we don't need to worry about sending the entire state this was my position this was my uh, my character has moved to x position my character has moved to y position we don't need to worry about all that just send what is the input which you have given and on the up and the local device is the one that going to take care of okay, with this particular input okay this is the simulation i have to do this is what my character should move or this is my character should behave so that kind of thing will be handled by quantum and and the entire logic is uh, so f- this is fully decoupling simulation logic that is being handled by quantum ecs so what will happen is right we are going to get two different types of uh, uh, while we are implementing the entire gameplay will be implemented on the quantum ecs and unity will be used to represent or the present uh, because uh, in very short term what i could able to tell is right your gameplay logic your data management how that particular behavior should happen everything will be maintained by quantum and unity will be used to execute or present that particular logic whatever that is being written this is how it is being divided into two ways now when we are working on a game you don't need to worry about anything related to the network implementation quantum takes care of that particular part so this is in general how how the quantum works now fight to kill when we have done with all our experiments with other pun to and with all other different approaches now with the quantum approach what we have done so what we have done is right as i mentioned right it was just an input exchange in between both the devices 
where I could able to send the data and depending upon that particular data, my simulation of the gameplay will be executed. So that is where which we need to mainly focus on that particular simulation gameplay logic. So uh, when we say simulation, uh, so Unity will be used as a viewing representation. And <clears throat> when we are talking about the custom animator, so there is this one advantage which we are going to get, going to get with the custom animator. Uh, let me explain you what, what is a custom animator is meant to be. Uh, what will happen is, right, uh, let's take an example, like if uh, if there is a character animation, okay? Now, if you try to execute the character animation, uh, if you pass that particular character animation to the Unity, Unity gonna run all the frames that are related to that particular character. For example, if an animation takes care of 20 frames or 30 frames or 60 frames, Unity is going to take care, uh, Unity is going to execute the animation depending upon the device processor that is being held. If there are some low-end devices, it could work in a different way or there are high-end devices. That's a kind of different variation. But the control is not in our hands. Now, Sorry guys, I think Bamshi dropped off. We'll just wait for him to come back. Okay. Uh, sorry guys. Uh, yeah. uh, are you guys able to see me? It's okay, back. cool. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so yeah. So coming to the custom, what the advantage we are going to get with the custom animator is. Uh, so now what quantum does is right quantum does a beautiful job over here what it does is right the unit is complete uh, mechanism uh, the data is being uh, extracted and the quantum manages the quantum deterministic animator works uh, by baking the entire information that is generated by the unity's mechanism controller so now what will happen is right that particular entire data that is being generated by the unity mechanism controller will be handled by the quantum now quantum, what will happen is right, as we mentioned, right? If this is completely deterministic and runs frame by frame, now what will happen is right, each and every frame will be executed because even your animation also, you don't need to worry on that because quantum takes care of being run it frame by frame. That is how it is being handled. And the entire code, whatever, which we are going to write and the quantum is written should be stateless. Now, uh, when I say stateless, the reason is as we are sending the data frame by frame, we are trying to ensure that that particular frame, whenever I send one frame, my entire data related to that particular operation is being being sent into a single object. Now, what we have to do is, right, we can't maintain the existing state. Otherwise, what will happen is, right, when you're doing a rollback or prediction, uh, that particular existing state, if you have already saved a variable, that particular data, you're not going to get back. It, it might miss. So what, one, what, what we have to ensure that, we have to write the stateless code completely. It should be stateless code. And we also have to ensure that the game should, uh, so uh, we should also ensure that there should, there should not be any checksum errors. So when I say checksum errors, uh, all the code, or all the variables that are being defined, make sure that they are deterministic. Uh, because if we use the deterministic thing, then what will happen is, right, obviously the opponent uh, also will be having the same kind of variable that is being exactly executed where both of our variables will be identical. So that is one of the approach which we, which should help with. So now with this particular thing, what, 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 uh, what we are able to do is that we are just focusing only on writing the input and making sure that our entire gameplay logic sits on quantum and the unity uses the execution part, how this particular logic is being triggered. So that particular thing is being run by the unity. So that is how we are going to do it. And we were able to get some sample codes and demo videos that were shared by quantum folks so that uh, so that that helped us to uh, develop better and this is uh, i think like we are uh, having pretty short time so let me try to run it quickly so this is the input system input system which we have used to build this game uh, as i was mentioning you we just need to mention maintain the input system each input controller whatever which you see here uh, will will be assigning an animation that is being uh, used to run the game. For example, in this particular case, you could able to see the joystick movements. Each and every joystick can have uh, left, right movement and that particular parts. And I could able to jump. So all these are the input systems that are being used within the game. 
and you would also see the attack buttons over here. Uh, when I tap on a punch button, then the punch button related action should be executed. So those are all the different things which you could able to see. And the second thing, what you also have to do is right animations mapping is very important to build any fighting game. Uh, what we have, what you could able to see over here is uh, for every action. For example, if you are moving forward, then what is the input type which you are going to do? What kind of action animation uh, a character should execute? So, so what we have done is right. If you look into the columns, we have action type. What kind of action it is? What kind of input it needs to be go? Action animation. What kind of animation needs to be executed? What would be a reaction animation? There are some animations. If you see the basic movement, there will be no reaction animation. But for example, if you are going to do a normal punch, then I expect when I when I do a punch punch input, then I expect an, a character animation for that. And at the same time, when my punch action is executed successfully, how the character needs to be reacted. So those are the different things. So you could be able to see them over here. Uh, yeah. So uh, so that was about. Uh, uh, so that was about the fight to kill, how we have to build. Now, what are all the different learning curves which we have taken, uh, which we have considered? So what we have done is, right, we have built a basic prototype initially. Uh, we just ensure that we built a, we built with one character and uh, we have done, as I mentioned, you right, we have done some two to three joystick inputs and there was one uh, button actions that are need to be done. And we have integrated quantum. We did a basic prototype and run with multiple networks, just ensuring that how the prototype comes in and we are very satisfied with that. And this the uh, quantum has this customer animator approach. Uh, just ensure that while you're extracting thing, uh, uh, we need to we need to we need to make sure that the custom animator is done properly. And uh, we we as this as the requirement was to run on more more mobile devices, uh, we have to do a lot. We went with a lot of assets optimization uh, because uh, we have done lots and lots of iterations, making sure that uh, the poly count gets decreased and uh, the FPS shouldn't go beyond 50. Uh, if, if it drops, then we might be running into multiple troubles. So we have done a lot of optimizations on that. And the ping rate was, uh, the game was running pretty smooth up to 200 milliseconds. And uh, this particular thing was tested on 3G and 4G networks and the build was, uh, and the game was working fine. And uh, so though the game is working fine, what will happen is that we have to release the game. Uh, but there are some hiccups which you might encounter for the end users where you might you you cannot restrict the player to not to come on board as you have very little bad network so what we are trying to do is that we are going to deliver proper communication to the user uh, ensuring that uh, uh, you are running on low network just come for the stable network so those kind of different kinds of proper communication that is needed wherever that is needed we are going to and what are all the different advantages which we got from using quantum one was a uh, very short time to understand the SDK it took very little time for us and it took approximately three to four days for us to build a basic prototype and experiment and we were uh, guaranteed on that and uh, we don't need to worry on anything related to the multiplayer backend we have just focused only on gameplay logic on game logic mainly we have to we have written decoupled simulation project and development time was dropped drastically our initial projection what we thought is right, it went up to six to eight months and the real game time development, I'm like the overall execution, it took four months. But for us, when you are talking about the QA phase, it took one more month. But overall, the original game development came down to three months. And uh, we were just focusing only on the uh, gameplay logic. And, uh, uh, and, and we also have the quantum support. Uh, I'm like quantum has a discard group. Uh, where, I, where we could able to post the questions that are related, anything related to the quantum. And uh, there were there were support, uh, there were quantum developers from that particular quantum team so that they could able to respond. And there's a pretty big community over there where I could able to uh, interact with other developers also. And there are certain chances where if you are running into major trouble, then we can directly interact with the quantum developers for any queries. And uh, one one quick thing is right. Maybe we are the first guys who who have developed quantum in India, because there was uh, initially we were connected to the Singapore server, and we were getting some uh, the ping rate was a bit high. So now when we sent an email to Chris, I think Chris thanks for that. Then immediately on the next day he hosted uh, um, he he sent a, he he hosted uh, a server on Chennai for us to experiment. That that decreased a lot, and uh, right now I think our Good, good amount of ping rate is around 30 to 40 MPS, not more than that. 
and we are also getting some pretty good amount demo videos and the sample codes are also available so that they could able to for each genre when i say each genre you could able to build a fighting game you could able to build a car racing game for each and every genre there are some sample codes so that you could able to use and understand how to build these kind of games this is what that was there and uh, yeah so i think we are done with this if, if you guys have any question and answers you could able to ask us Awesome. Uh, Chris and Vamshi, I think Chris, there's a question for you on the Q&A. Chris, we can't hear you if you're talking. Uh, you're on mute. Ah, okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm oh, reading okay. the uh, the question. Okay, now I'm, I'm here. Sorry. Um, so, in case of unstable internet connectivity, how does rollback mm -hmm. affect the game sync? Was uh, was um, the first part of the question. So, in general, uh, multiplayer development is is complicated because you have to to deal with uh, the latency, of course. Um, in the case of quantum, you only send around input, and and in certain games, input is very good predictable. So, if, for example, in a in a fighting game or in a in a racing game, if you keep pressing a certain key because you move to the right, um, predicting input is relatively correct. So. Um, but of course, if there are spikes where you have, let's say, bad connectivity, um, rollbacks will happen, and then visually something is happening, right? So you need to correct. Um, so the simulation will be corrected instantly. Um, so that's the easy part. But you as a developer have to decide if you get that rollback event, how to cope with it, right? If how you want to correct it, if you want to rubber band uh, the position to to the new um, position, so um, so let's see if there's a second part. Um, for example, if a player information is wrong combined with unstable internet speed, so what factors are important to keep the game in sync? So the good part is you you. Your simulation will keep in sync, so Quantum will will make that sure. You, as a developer, have to deal with visualizing this, so that's the the challenging part. But of course, we cannot do magic. Um, but we have lots of games live, and it works uh, beautifully. So that's what I can say. So, is there another question? Why can, can we use a regular animator? Maybe that uh, Vamji can answer this one. I can do too. Yeah. So uh, um, we can do the regular Unity animation. So there is no stop on. So uh, what will happen is, right? Uh, so uh, OK, uh, just a second. guys. Yeah, so the, the, the custom animator, uh, what it does is, right, uh, we can use the, uh, the, 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 Unity, the Unity animation. I'm like, what we could able to use is the Mechanum controller, whatever the animation set which we have, uh, which we have designed, which we have built now. So that particular, uh, uh, the data needs to be extracted because we need to make sure that the, uh, the sync is deterministic because the animator, whatever which you are trying to use, so the animation frame, for example, like if I move my hand, now there is, uh, if I move my sword from starting from left to right, now the total number of frames that are being recorded, approximately think that there are around 60 frames that are being generated starting from left to right movement. Now, each frame needs to be uh, identical from the both the devices. So that is the reason what we are trying to do is, right, uh, just ensuring that the entire data is being extracted and uh, uh, making sure that both the frames, like even when I send the frame from, from one device to the other device, my animation should be uh, deterministic. So I, both of the frames should be very identical. So that is one of the uh, major reasons to move into that. Particular. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so there's another question, which tech architecture to, to choose for IO, PUBG type real-time multiplayer games. So uh, PUBG would be an FPS with 100 players. So best practice would be there something um, you would in fact have a server. So you would use states and using a dedicated server um, doing this. So this is why Unreal Engine networking is so popular, just made for this particular type. So there's a limit of players, probably around 100, 150 players. So to, to get into such a competitive FPS. So then IO games um, is a completely different thing. So I would need more explanations what you mean with IO. I think IO became popular with web multiplayer. Um, so this is usually Node.js, everything that's happening in the web browser. And then if you say IO games on, on mobile phones, I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure what what IO means in this case. It it depends a bit. Let's say if it's physically okay. So let's take the next question. What have to choose for LAN wireless LAN, not internet multiplayer games like Five versus Five? Yeah. So. Usually what you do there is having one of the clients, one of the players to be the host. Um, so you can use, um, so we have a product like Bold where you can either run it at, as dedicated server or run the server inside the, um, the game itself. So one of the clients can be that. So this approach would be probably the best there. Uh, don't we use external variables such as time, delta time in the game program for the frames to sync in? Um, uh, I'm not sure. So so the essential part to, to say here in, in quantum is there's a synchronized clock across all devices. So basically, if you put the devices next to each other, you they will have um, a synchronized clock. Um, and the simulation is doing all this for you and synchronizing everything. So you have a perfect replay, let's say. And if people would grab or or let's say you would have a box in your simulation and people would grab that box at the same time, somebody would win, right? And the simulation would figure this out. Um, because based on the timestamp, which is synchronized across all the devices, you would have a synchronized time. I, I'm I'm not sure if I answered this question actually the way it was intended to. But our time is up now. Are we okay to to get further questions or? Otherwise, I think we are we are up. Yeah, I, actually, I think we have covered all the questions. Any light on Among Up, Among Up, a multiplayer, probably Among Us multiplayer, right? Um, so Among Us is, is like a like a more or less a single Brazilian guy. So he uses a very very lean multiplayer technology he wrote himself. Um, so it's very slim. Um, So I think that's that's it. Yeah, Christoph and Bamshi, I think we have taken care of all the questions. Uh, thanks for your talk. Uh, we can go to backstage now. Thanks a lot, guys. It was yeah. a pleasure. Thanks, thanks a lot, Bamshi. Yeah. Thanks.